of a made up mind. The power of a made up mind. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are carried as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul said, I am persuaded. That word, I am persuaded, simply means I've got a made up mind. Every one of us can realize that if we have a made up mind, we can overcome anything. Amen? If I have a made up mind, I'm going to wake up tomorrow, I'm going to get dressed, and I'm going to do my work. Amen? And if I have a made up mind, I'm going to expect my employer to give me a check and pay for it. <laughs> if I have a made up mind when a doctor tells me that I'm sick and I submit myself to the doctor then my mind is made up I'm going to listen to the doctor. And if he says take something for your cold for seven days he didn't mean four. He meant seven. Don't mean to take it four days and feel better and say, I'll save the three for another time. No, there was a reason for him to say, take seven days. So when you submit yourself to someone in authority like that, you need to obey what they say. Amen. When the doctor tells you what you need to do, you need to obey the doctor. When the police officer comes up and says what he needs to do, you better obey the police officer. Amen. When the fireman comes and checks out your house, you better obey the fireman and do what he says to do. In other words, you have to have a made up mind to submit yourself to the authorities. You have to have a made up mind that you're going to do better. Amen? When I was coming up, my daddy, bless his heart, did the best he could. But in those days, when you had big families, children had to help do the, make the, the garden and the farming. And daddy's, daddy was a sharecropper. So my dad got a fourth grade education. Fourth grade, he had to stop to help my granddaddy to raise stuff up to feed the family. He got a fourth grade education. Now my mom, bless her heart, she got an eighth grade education. But in her day, for women, that was something. So between the two of them, they got a high school education. Daddy could not even write when he went in the army. He learned to write and his task and skills that he had while he was in service. But he was a hard worker. And he had a made up mind that he was going to be a daddy. He had a made up mind he was going to provide for his family no matter what it took with the amount of education that he had. And he did it till the day he died. In other words, I had, and I looked at my dad, and I saw that we had to move every six months, a year, maybe two years was the longest we stayed in a place, because we rented. And when you're renting, you're always at the discretion of the landlord. And so we would have to move. Dad would move, fortunately, closer to his job, where it wouldn't cost so much gas. And I realized his hindrance was not that he couldn't be taught. It was he did not have the paper that said he had an education. My dad created a tool for the U.S. Air Force to put those upholstery buttons in the seats that these pilots fly. But, because he didn't have the education to patent it, 
the U.S. Air Force took it because he used it on the job. So he didn't have the education to even protect his own invention. And so I decided, if I'm going to do anything in this life, I've got to get an education. And I made up my mind to get an education. And God provided every step of the way. Amen? Amen. You wouldn't think that growing up in a South Georgia home that you could ever see China or Germany or France or England or Australia or many of the states in the United States. But because I had a made-up mind to serve God, He enabled me to do it all. And He provided it on His dime, not mine. <laughs> what I'm saying is, when you have a made-up mind, you will always know that God loves you. And the devil will not convince you otherwise. I've had so many people that, we, and we're going to get to exactly what Paul is talking about here. There are so many people that when adversities happen, it gives them a gut punch. And it knocks all the breath out of them. And they have to struggle. And some keep their faith. Others don't. I was one of those that didn't. When my sister died of an aneurysm at 20 years old, not being sick at all that I know of up to that point, suddenly one night she laid down, she went to sleep, she woke up the next morning and within 24 hours she was dead. I was young in the Lord. I wasn't founded on the Word of God. And I got to be an angry young man. And I blamed it all on God. Later on when the Lord brought me back, He showed me the errors of my way. And one of the problems was, I didn't have a made up mind. Amen? I blamed God for everything. But it wasn't God's fault. In fact, because God took her the way He did when He did, He kept her from a life of a mother and a dad having to wash her and clothe her and till she eventually would die. Or be put in a home somewhere if mom and daddy died. The Lord said, I took her because she was a free spirit. She loved life. And she wouldn't have liked to have been a vegetable. I loved her more than you did. You see, we don't, we can't fathom the love of God. If we knew how deep His love was, how high His love is, how wide His love is, we would know we could never get away from the love of God. And this is what Paul is saying right here. Now, our goal in these series of messages is to, give, to equip you with tools that will make you victorious in your Christian life. No matter what comes, you're going to be victorious if you will follow what we're about to say. We've already seen where hope will enable us to survive any crisis in our life as long as you can hope. As long as you have breath. Listen, as long as you can breathe, you've got hope. Amen? It's when you stop breathing that hope don't help much. But as long as you can breathe, you got hope. Last week we learned that God was on our side. Therefore, we cannot be defeated. <laughs> if God be for you, who can be against you? I don't care about all the gossipers and the backbiters and those who want to step on people to get up. I guarantee you, God's going to take care of you. Amen. God's going to take care of you and you'll get the promotions in, to the places where God wants you to be. Amen? And let's face it, if God don't want you there, you don't want to be there anyway. Amen? But if you will let God come up under you and raise you up, God talks about exalting some, and then He talks about bringing some down. Amen? So if we allow God in our lives to lead the way and to talk to Him and ask His advice. Amen? I remember as a young boy coming up, I could run to my dad. And I could ask my dad, about things. I don't have my dad anymore. But I've learned to run to God. Amen. And God always gives me the right information. Amen. So, 
Today we want to explore the power of a made-up mind. God has already, Paul in his writing has already said that God's promise that He would work all things for our good if we love Him and fulfill His purpose that He's designed for us. We've learned that no one can charge us concerning our sin or condemn us because of our sin because God has called us to be justified in Jesus Christ to live, die, and rose again. Anytime you start hearing a voice that says, did God really forgive you? Yes, He did. And that voice is trying to convince you that He didn't is Satan because Satan is the deceiver. Amen? I learned a long time ago when, when the devil tried to come and said, do you really believe God believed you, uh, saved you from that? Yes, He did. One of the writers, the prophet says, he reached down into the miry clay. <laughs> I was in a cistern and God reached down and got me. Amen? It doesn't matter how low we get, God will reach down and pick us up. All we got to do is love Him. Amen? And His love will bring Him to us. Walking with Jesus with a made up mind to serve and please Him will make the Christian more victorious in their lives. If you walk with a made up mind with Jesus, Jesus, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to obey you. I want to tell you, when you have that kind of a made up mind, a bad thing might happen, but nothing will ever come to your mind. Well, I need to quit serving Jesus. You'll say, I want to serve Jesus more. I want to be in His house. I want to be with His people. Amen? Listen now. A made-up mind makes us victorious over every negative circumstance in life. Notice what Paul says. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, trials, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or even if we have to give our life the sword? Paul's answer is nothing will separate us. Amen. Those are some adversities that Paul experienced. Paul was stoned. Paul was shipwrecked. He was sent to Rome to die. So he didn't allow these adversities in his life to make him trust God less. It made him trust God more. And to write to the Roman church, you need to trust God. You need to believe in God the way I do. You need to have a made up mind. Paul begins his argument on the power of made up mind by asking the question, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? We need to ask ourselves, is there anything that you believe that could separate you from the love of Christ? The answer should be no. No matter what happens in my life, it will not separate me from the love of Christ. I will be His child. Remember, God is love. And the psalmist said, If I ascend into the heavens, behold, you are there. If I descend to the depths of the sea, behold, thou art there. If I descend into hell, Thou art there. What is he saying? You can't get away from God. And since God is love, you can't get away from God's love. Amen? God, when you feel like you are unlovable, know this, God loves you. When people try to tell you that you're unlovable, know that God loves you. How many times have I counseled with abusive relationships where one uh, of the marriage partners put down the other marriage partner and told them how bad they were or how dumb they were. And that's sad that one human being would say to another human being, you're just stupid. That's bad. Particularly when they say, I love you. You see, God's love for that individual can help them through whatever that situation might be. He's telling us today, no matter what happens in your life, the love of God will sustain you. Paul wanted to show his readers that suffering does not separate believers from the love of Christ, but carries them along to their goal of living in the presence of God. Notice what, as it is written, 
For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Jesus said, In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus has said to us, We're going to have trials. We're going to have testings. As Christians, we're going to have sickness. As Christians, we're going to have financial adversity sometime. As Christians, sometimes not everything's going to go right because of the world we live in. I guarantee you that poor Jewish student that was just trying to walk across the quadrangle never knew that she'd have her eyes poked with a Palestinian flag. She never thought about it that day. God loved her. And she kept her faith. It was beautiful when I listened to her testimony. Even as a, as a person who uh, is a Jew and worshiping Judaism, she loves God. Death cannot separate the believer from the love of God. Don't you know it? That even in death, you're going to experience God's love. Some of the greatest experience that I've seen among people is when they're passing. And suddenly they have that peace. And suddenly they're enveloped by God's love. And they close their eyes just like they're going to sleep. They're not struggling. They're not trying to get the next breath. They relinquish themselves to the Lord. Because they know they're going to a place where they are eternally loved. And will always be loved. Paul has made up his mind to live or die for Christ on the foundation that we are all like sheep accounted for, for slaughter. Paul said, if I live, I am the Lord. If I die, I am the Lord. Whether I live or I die, I am the Lord. What a made up mind. Amen. We need to have that kind of a thought. Lord, if I live, I'm yours. If I die, I'm yours. Whether I live or I die, I'm yours. Nothing's going to turn me around. Not a person, not a problem, not the devil. Nothing's going to turn me around. I'm going to serve you right into glory. Amen. Secondly, a made up mind sees victory and not defeat. Amen. Don't ever look at a situation like you're defeated. There's always a solution. And that solution is always talk to God. <laughs> Trust God. Believe God. You'll never know how God is working in your behalf before you even get there. Because God is all-knowing. And God is all-powerful. And God is always present. So, He already knows tomorrow what you're going to experience. And because He already knows what you're going to experience, He already has grace and mercy for you in your time of need. Think about that. That I can wake up tomorrow and think, well, praise God, I can face this day. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because I'm walking with my God. And my God knows when I get in that car, He's going to keep me safe. And if for some reason an accident happens, God's going to take care of the accident. And He's going to take care of me. Amen? You see, when you have a positive attitude about God, when you have a positive attitude about serving God, and when you have a made-up mind about serving Him, there's nothing in this world that can separate you from the love of God. Notice what? Paul sees himself as a victor or more than a conqueror over all adversity. And he bases his success on the love of God. Think about that. I'm more than a conqueror. Why? Because God loves me. <laughs> Amen. I'm more than a conqueror over cancer because God loves me. I'm more than a conqueror over tumors because God loves me. I'm more than a conqueror over financial adversity because God loves me. I'm more than a conqueror over broken relationships because God loves me. Amen. I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. Why? Because of the love of Paul acknowledges that it's Christ in him that has made him more than a conqueror. Amen. Well, Christ living in you makes you victorious. Amen. That's what 
differentiates the believer from the unbeliever. You have the power within you to overcome these things. When it looks like you don't have enough wisdom and you don't have enough knowledge and you don't have enough strength, call on God because God can give you the wisdom. God can give you the knowledge. And where your weakness is, God will make His strength perfect in your life. Amen. I'm talking about 50 years of experience here. Amen. I'm not talking like some rookie preacher. I've seen it, and I know it, and it works. Amen. Christ purchased Paul's victory by expressing God's love and His love on Calvary. You have no greater love than when you look at this cross and know that at one point, a cross on Calvary, the Lord stretched out His arms. And some kid, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And His arms are still outstretched to everyone who will come so He can love them. Paul has made up his mind that no adversity, no power, nothing in his past or anything in his future will separate him from the love of God. Thank God. Paul has such a made up mind, such a persuasion, that nothing in heaven or hell or on the earth shall be able to separate him from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He says there's no principalities, there's no powers, no devil <laughs> that can separate me from the love of God. There's no evil people that can separate me from the love of God. There's no evil government that can separate me from the love of God. Amen? You see, the early Christians gave their life for what they believe. And we in America have it easy, folks. Amen. We have an easy walk with Jesus. I know we have adversities, and I know, I know we have problems. We don't have anything like what these Romans were going through. And Paul was talking to these Romans, uh, Christians, under Roman oppression, these Roman Jews. He was telling them, listen, with all that's going on around you, with all the things that are being crucified and set on fire, with those that are being fed to the lions because they love Jesus. No, even through death, God loves you. And He's going to take you to a better place because of your love for Him. And so Paul is writing to a people that's in a lot worse predicament than we are. And he's saying, I'm going to separate me. Amen. I'm in Roman imprisonment, but it ain't going to separate me. Amen. If I die tomorrow, Paul says, it's not going to separate me. Because of the love of God. It is impossible to get beyond God's loving reach. You cannot get beyond it. Nothing in the universe is outside of God's control. Therefore, nothing can separate us from His eternal love. Therefore, we should make our minds up to serve Him regardless of what we must face from day to day. Face today, tomorrow, and the future in the love of God and be made more than a conqueror. Amen. You know, I once said, you should stand, get up and say, this is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And you need to do that. It gives you a great attitude to start the day. But you need to add to that, God loves me. <laughs> and I'm going to be loved all day long. And when I go to sleep at night, I'm going to be loved all night long. And tomorrow when I wake up, God willing, I'm going to be loved all tomorrow. Amen. Wake up in the love of God. Walk through the day in the love of God. And go to sleep in the love of God. Amen. Sister, do you feel like...